Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, guys. We have found the how, the kafir. We have found it. The debate is over. All you have to do now is make a choice. Just like with other things that you've chosen, you have to make a choice here if you are interested in this Akida debate. So, I studied Akida so that you won't have to. I'm going to I've, went, I've gone into the depth of all the discussions, all the arguments. I believe for those of you that are always asking me questions of what should I choose or you don't know where to start or you just want simple thing to like understand what is being discussed this matter that I'm about to discuss here is going to do that for you it's going to be simple but it's very important because the stances that each position takes on this reveals what they don't want to say that's what we're going to be discussing in this video in this video I am not going to make it long because I know this matter might be serious for some people and I don't want to trivialize the issue. I don't want to make uh, like a long video where I'm just rambling on and rubbing it in on the face of the, the other side. I'm not going to do that. Okay? Because I started off too not knowing. Okay? I started off not knowing anything about these Akida issues and I used to be confused in the beginning. I used to be like, which one should I choose? I don't know. But as I studied and as, I, as it went on, I was able to tie it down to some concepts. Where I saw that you have to make a decision between taking that position or not. And those are the things I have done to now get to this position. Where I feel like I can end it here. I'm telling you. The, the place I have gotten to, I have seen both sides in a much clearer way. Such that I can decide which one I'm going to choose. Okay? And just because I'm saying I'm choosing one side. It doesn't mean the other side is going to be over. Or they're going to shut up. Or they will never speak again or they are defeated or they are finished no they will always continue to make their arguments but I've seen enough to make my decision okay now maybe like how is this possible I'll tell you if you guys are new here you might not know that I started off my channel responding to Christianity I used to make videos about Christians a lot and if you looked at my channel in the past couple of months I've not made one single video on Christianity be like why because I was done with it. I was done. Like, yeah. I've seen enough to know that I'm not going to choose that. That is what I'm talking about. I've seen enough of Christian doctrine. Because I studied it too. I studied the doctrine of the Trinity. And I went in depth into it. It's not just like a surface level thing. I went in there. And I saw like, I'm not going to choose that. I'm, going to, I'm not going to choose it. And at that point, I had to make a decision. That yes, I'm not going to be a Trinitarian. And when I made that decision... Did the Trinitarians stop making their arguments? Did they stop believing in the Trinity? Or did it change? No. But for me, I have seen enough to make a decision. That's what I'm saying. Now. Okay. So now, it's a question of choice. Like I'm saying. It's a question of choice. Once you see what both sides are saying, you can make a choice. Okay. For anyone that is like, they've told you that Akida is the most important thing and you have to, make a, you have to choose the right Akida, right? It's a question of choice. Okay? And you're going to choose. Just like you're choosing between Shia and Sunni. You're choosing to be a Sunni. Even though most of you didn't choose that. You just, you're just Sunni by tradition. <laughs> but anyway, the point is that we make this sort of decisions every day in our life. Now, let's get to the point. Let's get to the point. Let me not ramble on for too long. I've narrowed it down to two main concepts. There's another one. You could add many. In fact, I could have just spoken about one. But... For the context of those that are also interested in other topics, let's narrow it down to two. Two concepts. Okay? The third one I could have added was uh, literalism. Are the Salafis literalists? No, they are not. They are not literalists. In the sense that absolute literalists, they are not. What is, whenever they, they do Tawil, they don't call it, uh, what's it called? They don't call it Tawil. When they interpret, they don't call it Tawil. When they take the Majaz meaning, they don't call it Majaz. They call it Hakika. And you can read their uh, book, works on this and you see it. They, don't, they are not literalists. They would do Tawil. They are not against Tawil. They somewhat, they are just against calling it Tawil or calling it Majaz. You just have to call Majaz Hakika. Because, you get the point. Now, let's go to this matter. Bro, this is profound. This is it, bro. This is what you need to know. And these are where the choices lie. Okay? So let's get into it. The first one is spatial temporality. 
What is spatial temporality? Space and time. Does it apply to God or creatures? You have to make a decision between this. The Salafis or all those people in their tradition, they are saying space and time applies to everything in existence. God, gene, man, things in the unseen, the things in the seen world, space and time is a necessity that applies to all of it. The Asheris, they say no. Space and time only applies to creatures. This is where the choice lies. This is not the important point I'm bringing, but this is the first one I wanted to mention so that you know also. You see, you're going to have to choose. Do you believe that space and time applies to God and all things in existence, even the things you've never seen before? You believe space and time applies to it or not? The Salafi says yes. The Asheris and the Maturidis and the other guys say no. You make a decision there. Now, the second one that, that this is the main point of this video, it starts now. The Hadith of Adam Ali Salam being made in God's image. This is where I don't know the how, I don't know the kefir. We know the kefir. Okay, that's my claim now. We already know the kefir. If you don't know the kefir, you don't understand what you're talking about. We know the kefir. How? I'll get to it now. So, the hadith of Adam being made in God's image. This is the one that decides the kefir. And all the ambiguities that always goes around. This is where I now know. I have to make a decision too. Just like when I got to the depth of the Trinity and I saw what they were really saying, I'm like, okay, no. I'm not going to follow you down that route. I'm not going to believe that. You believe that. When I got to the other issues too, I made a decision. Just like spatial temporality, I made a decision like, no. I don't think we have to extend space and time to God's essence or even things beyond the realm of this world. I made a decision there. Here too, is Adam made in God's image. If you don't understand what that means, if Adam is made in the image of God, then God is in the image of Adam. If Adam is made in God's image, God is, what do you call, in the image of Adam too. It's like, it's reflexive. Okay? You might be like, okay, but what, what are you talking about here? The mysterious, evasive how or kefir that we've always been talking about, how the, the, the kefir. And do you know how I saw this? I saw it in their interpretation itself. The interpretations that all of them have given, they don't seem to point out this issue. They will be talking about surah, that you know what this hadith, like for instance, Sheikh Ibn Tamir, he was saying that, do you know what this hadith means? It means that every existence has a surah, has an image. That's what this hadith is talking about. Yes, the hadith is talking about that. That every existence has a surah, has an image. But not just any kind of image. The hadith is talking about the image of Adam and the image of God. So, you, they ascribe image to God. They're like, oh, therefore God has an image. Fair enough. But they will be like, we don't know the how. This is where I now want to show you. There is no mystery here. There is no mystery. The image of Adam is the image of God. Don't you understand that? If you don't take this meaning, you are not taking it literally. And now look at this. That hadith, you could take it literally in the physical sense. Physical sense, what I mean is that the features of hand, eyes, and uh, all those parts. Or you could take it in the sense of sight, hearing, ability. You could take it in that sense. The Salafis, they take it in both. They take it in both. That this hadith establishes that God has eyes, we have eyes. I'll put a link or a comment to show you that this is what they believe. Go to Islamic question and answer of the Salafi this thing. And about the image, uh, Adam's image and God's image, you'll find it there. So, they take it in the physical sense and that's where you get them. This is where you get the kefir. So, this is how I found it. Look at this. Look at the human being. Look at a chimpanzee and a dog or a cat let's say a human being a cat and a chimpanzee look at those features that they are talking about eyes do does the cat have eyes yes chimpanzee does he have eyes yes which other one did they talk? hand the cat has hand the chimpanzee has hand this hadith if you want to take it literally he's saying that adam is special he is made in god's image 
even though those other things have hand and they have eyes they are not made in God's image so it, the cat is not made in God's image and the chimpanzee of course not is not made in God's image yet they have eyes they have all those things so what exactly is this hadith talking about other than, if you are taking it literally other than the fact that Adam is literally what God looks like this is it anyone trying to be ambiguous with this stuff they are not taking it literally the literal meaning is that you want to know what God looks like? Adam. And it's not just in his ability of being able to see and all of that. No. They have already gone too far. They've already said his eyes and hands and those things. They've already said it. So they are not taking just the ability. They are taking the physical meaning too. And in the context of the Hadith too, we, when I hit someone on the face, it's not so they ascribe face, eyes and all those things. But now here is the problem. The face of Adam, and I'm putting this out in another video, it includes the nose and the mouth and all those other parts. If you are taking it literally, God will literally have that. There's no ambiguity here. God will literally have it, even though they will not have See, I could go into depth to show you how they can even defend this. I can defend it for them because I've already read their works. They will just say that. Whatever attributes you think, here, let's say you want to affirm nose or ear or, or mouth, all you have to add is that it is eternal, it is indestructible, it is, what's it called? Uh, eternal, indestructible, perfect, they have four principles. Eternal, indestructible, perfect, and uncreated. Once you add those four, they feel like you can affirm any attribute. And I read this in Carl, uh, Carl Shelley's book. The point is that, that's not even the point, the point is that, you're going to make a decision. What is the decision you're going to make here? Do you believe in a God that looks like a human being? Or not? That is the decision. Not in uh, the ability to see. No. Look, literally looks like a human being. Even though, because they already believe in spatial temporality, that God will be incredibly big. Bigger than the entire universe. It should just be a man-looking being that is incredibly huge. Bigger than the entire universe. And... That's it. But if you are if you're saying you don't know the how, you know the how because this is the how. When you put a chimpanzee and a human being, which one is made in God's image? It cannot, you, since you're taking the physical sense, you are saying you are excluding the chimpanzee. Even though we, we can say that the chimpanzee and the human being, they look very much alike. You are saying no. You are narrowing it down to it, the human physical feature. That is what you're doing there. You, people, you, you need to understand this point. When you say that the chimpanzee is not made in God's image, and yet it has eyes, face, and all those things that Adam has, what are you saying other than the image of Adam is exactly what we are talking about here? And one of my friends online, he, he used to like defend Ibn Tabia on in many of these issues. In fact, anytime I want to like understand some of these things, I used to ask him, and he gave an analogy of the Grand Canyon and the, and the picture of a Grand Canyon. Now look at this. He even defended it somewhat. He's defending the position that, see, the Grand Canyon in reality is the real one. But the Grand Canyon on the picture is not really made of the same material as the real Grand Canyon. And uh, what's it called? There's no Teshpi between them. It's trying to, that's what he's trying to say, right? But the point is that the Grand Canyon picture looks exactly like the real Grand Canyon and that's all it is I'm not saying your position is contradictory or you cannot defend it you can continue to defend it just like the Trinitarians can continue to defend theirs but here's the thing we know what it looks like because that the image of the Grand Canyon and the Grand Canyon they look exactly alike the Grand Canyon the image of the Grand Canyon does not look like Kilimanjaro or any other image it looks like the Grand Canyon so the human being, not the chimpanzee, not the other animals that have eyes and all those other features, the human being specifically. So you have to believe in the man-looking God. And actually, it's the other way around. Because man looks like God. So God looks like man. Simple. That's how it is. The Asheris and the other guys will say, no. We don't believe in a God that looks like a man. And you cannot say God doesn't look like a man. Literally, it does. It does. And that's where it is. That's where 
I've gotten to the point where, just like the other ones, I knew when I have to make a decision. Just like with the spatial temporality and the other ones, here again, I make a decision. That no, I'm not following you down that route. God does not look like a human being. Okay? You are committed to that because you've taken this hadith and you've taken it literally. You are committed to that. Me, I'm not. And that's the difference between us. And whatever the answer will be on the day of judgment, we're going to find out. Because it's a belief. I believe, no. God does not look like a human being. You affirm it. That is the difference between us. I'm going to end the video here. We'll discuss more in the comment section. If anyone has any objection to this, I'll be very happy to discuss it with you. But I'll be like, I've come to the end. I can end the entire Akida stuff here. Like, I'm not going further. Just I'm not, I'm not going to go and be pestering uh, Trinitarians anymore. This is it, bro. This is it. This is the end. All this Teshbi, all these arguments, all the arguments that we make. Mm -mm. This one is where I, I've seen where you have to make a decision. Believe in a God that looks like man, literally. Like, and many objections will come. I can flesh it out more because what is the image of Adam without the nose, without the mouth, without the ear? And by the way, if you read, if you go and read that article in the Islamic Question and Answer, they also included hand, which is just not just the face. So it's not, they are not restricting the image to the face alone. They're talking about hand and order and fingers. Bro, if that is the case, they are taking it that the entire image is not just restricted to the face. If you restrict it to the face, if you want to make that move, the argument still applies because God's face would literally be like the man's face. Literally. Look like it. Not like the chimpanzee, like the man. Now, if you want to take it the entire body, what part of a human body can you not ascribe? What part of a human body can you can you deny that will still remain Adam's image? That's, those are other questions we could ask, but I'm not going to go in there. I've shown you where you have to make a decision. Special temporality? Does it apply to God or not? The Salafi say yes. The Ashari say no. Does God look like a man, literally? The Salafis, they say yes. Even though they don't want to say that, they will try to avoid this. But that's what they are saying. That's what their position entails. The Ashari say no. In the comment section, some of them will come to try and say, no, this is not what it means. Bro, it is. It is, bro. You may, I feel like you made a mistake taking this hadith literally. All along, you've been doing well. You've been trying, you've been avoiding. In fact, if I try to make the same argument on the ability level, like let's say hearing and sight and all those things, they can still avoid it. But they've taken the physical, literal sense. That way, we know the how. Even though you may say the eyes is perfect, eternal, uncreated, and uh, what's it called? Uh, eternal, perfect, uncreated. What is the fourth criteria that I told you guys? I've already mentioned it. Go and look at it. The fourth criteria. Once all those, you can add the indestructible, okay? Like you cannot be cut into parts. You can add that to any attributes like the nose and you can affirm it. So you cannot, I don't know what you want to do here, but I've already shown you guys. Your, the, the decision is yours, bro. And this is the end of my inquiry. Me, I believe. I'm going to move on now to other discussions. I might still come back, like if occasionally some Trinitarians come and ask me questions and I respond to them. But I'm not going to, because I've already made my decision here. Here and here, I already know which one I'm going to believe in. And I'll stand by it till, till I die. And uh, on the Day of Judgment, God will decide. We will know the answer. But Trinitarians keep on asking me questions and I respond to them. But I, I'm not like delving into the doctrine of the Trinity anymore. I've already made videos on that. The same way with these Akida issues, I've already shown you what you have to choose. And you, if you want to still continue studying this, you can go ahead. For me, I've already made my own decision. And uh, I'm going to move on to maybe talking about politics and all those other issues now. And yeah, occasionally I might drop some videos. But that's it, pretty much it. So this is the end of the video, guys. Let's end it on a 20 minutes mark. Come in the comment section, bro. We found the how. We found the kefia, bro. If anyone says they don't know the kefia anymore, they know the kefia. It is not like the chimpanzee or like the cat. Man, that is the kefia. Look at yourself. You are made in Adam's image. You know what God's image is. You know it. Even though it's bigger and perfect and uncreated and all those things. But we know what it looks like. So see you guys later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.
وبركاته